The problem with function definitions can sometimes be that you don't know how many arguments there should be. So essentially the goal should be that the length of the function arguments should be defined by the user of this function, so whoever uses this function. And one solution would be to just use a simple slice, right? But there is a better solution, which is called variadic functions. Now, variadic functions do sound really scary, but the overall goal or the definition of a variadic function is that you can input a variable number of arguments. Now, this has a lot of advantages. It makes your code more efficient and even more readable for other developers. And it is also more developer friendly. A really popular variadic function is the fmt.println function, where you might know you basically can insert all sorts of arguments you want into this function. So you concatenate the arguments into one sort of list in the function call, and then these arguments are printed to the console. And I think the use cases of these specific variadic functions are pretty easy to grasp as well. Basically, whenever you don't know how many arguments in advance this function will take in, you can define this thing as a variadic function. Now, a common use case for these variadic functions could be, for instance, operating on a slice or array of varying lengths, which are then passed into the function. So let's quickly take a look here. Now, what I have here is a pretty easy to set up Golang project from scratch. And what we are going to do now is to define a sum function. Now, the purpose of this sum function is obviously to sum all the paths in numbers into one single integer for instance. So let's quickly define the function up here. So we say sum and then we want to use the function in this way. So let's just print the result of the sum function here. So the sum function should return an integer or a float for instance. And then we're going to say sum. So we are calling this function and here we want to pass in the arguments that should be sum up. Now, for now, I'm going to demonstrate the bad example, which is just going to declare an int slice. And in here, we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, for instance. And then let's just quickly do this function definition. So like I said, this should return an integer in the end. And here we are going to take in an array of numbers, which is going to be an int slice. Now, I think the logic is pretty easy to understand. So we are just going to return the sum here. Then we are going to return it. And in the main logic, we are just going to iterate over the array, basically. And I'm going to keep it simple here. And then we say sum plus equals to array and then at the index i. So let's quickly run this function here with go run main.go. And what we got is 21. But as you can see, this is a pretty ugly solution, right? We have to kind of define a dynamic array or slice in this case for just calling the sum function, which is pretty ugly and not really developer friendly and not really efficient at all. Now, and the best solution to refactor this code would be to just use a variadic function, right? So in the end, a variadic function is kind of similar or a variadic function parameter is kind of similar to an in slice. So it behaves like an in slice. So we can like reuse this logic here with getting the length of the slice and getting the number by an index from this slice. So a variadic function is basically defined by three dots in Golang. So what we can say here is just instead of having the slice, we can say dot 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 and then int. And now we've defined our first variadic function, which is pretty cool, I think. So what we can do here in our sum function is we can get rid of the slice definition. So what we can say here instead is just define one, two, three, four, five, six as the arguments. Because Golang now knows that our sum function is a variadic function and therefore it takes in all the arguments we want to specify. So now the length is kind of unknown and the user of this function or the developer of this function can define their arguments in any order and also with any length. Now what is I think pretty important to note is that we can still use slices. Right. So let's just say that 
I don't know, we got these numbers here from a database or something, but this is a data structure, which is of a dynamic array, right? So the data structure is a dynamic array, which in Golang is a slice. So let's just say that we have our numbers here and now these numbers are in a slice. Now, how can we define now these numbers into our sum function? And it is pretty easy because all we can do here or we can use is the slice literal syntax, which behaves really similar to the spread operator in other languages. So what we can say is just nums and then dot dot dot. Now this looks pretty scary and advanced and a lot of dots going on here. But all this takes in is basically it calls the sum function. And now the nums or the elements of our num slice are going to spread into the arguments of our sum function. So in the end, this thing here is nothing else than this here, right? So it passes in all the slice elements into our sum function with this kind of slice literal syntax. I think this is pretty powerful to know because obviously you can use this kind of slice literal syntax somewhere else as well. But coming back to variable functions, obviously we can define more arguments in our function here. So for instance, we can obviously say that the first argument could be a, let's say, starting point. Right, and this starting point can be also an integer. So now we got our starting point and let's just make use of that and say starting point for the initialization of our index i here. So let's just save this. And now obviously we have to define the starting point for our sum call. So what we can say is just say two here. Now this can be pretty confusing because we are kind of defining an integer and then we are defining more integers, right? So let's just get rid quickly of this num slice here and pass in our numbers. And now this looks kind of weird, right? Because we define two and then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, which seems to be really, really weird. But Golang automatically knows that the starting point is just the first argument. So it takes in the starting point as our two here. And then the rest is basically the variadic function parameter. So our kind of slice we use in the sum function. Now obviously we can mark this as a string for instance as well, but what we cannot do in a variate function is to define arguments after the variadic function parameter. So we cannot say for instance b integer, right? This does not work because obviously it's pretty clear that Golang does not know when this argument is going to occur, right? Because this variadic function parameter can be of length n basically. So let's just remove this here. And now hopefully variadic functions are clear for you. Now I know this was a pretty short video, but hopefully you now fully understand variadic functions. I think it's a pretty important thing to know in Golang. If you, by the way, want to know how to build a web server from scratch, then I highly recommend watching this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.